the refugees come in through Nimale and cross the border there. And so the biggest the biggest camp in the world and some, some of the others that are nearly as big are right in this area. I came here because of the war. The spread all over South Sudan. We came so many people, the vehicles, motorcycles, we scattered like nothing. On a daily basis, MAF is flying into usually several of the locations surrounding the refugee camps. It's one of the three largest refugee crises in the, in the world going on right now. And so there's many, many, many organizations that are trying to meet the desperate uh, humanitarian needs. Uganda uh, has been recognized for the unique uh, refugee program. They are given a piece of land, so because of that uh, they are able to do some cultivation, they are able to do other livelihood interventions. Most importantly, they are free to access jobs, they are free to access business opportunities. When you put an idea, an investment, kind of seed, build um, some idea in somebody, that idea can be able to grow and can change that individual, can change the family, can change even the entire community. Tutapona means we will be healed. So many of them feel hopeless, so many of them feel like there's no future. They kind of get put in an area where they have no friends, no family. And so for them to see that there's a whole community of people that are experiencing the exact same things that they are, I feel like it's that grounding for them to be able to start their new life again. I think that trauma care is one of the foundations for recovery for refugees. Utapona, you people are like our grandmothers. You are like our fathers who talk to us. I was calling my husband, now I'm very fat. <laughs> he said how, I said now we are okay. When you visit the settlements, uh, busy trading centers, refugees are doing businesses, uh, they are raising animals to complement uh, the supply that uh, they get. At the start, our malnutrition rate among the refugees was almost at 20%. As a talk now, as it used to below 8%. You can not imagine somebody who is a refugee um, coming out and say, I want to save for tomorrow because I don't know how tomorrow looks like. And I want to take care of my future, I want to take care of uh, the future of my children by saving the little I have today. We see that it's happening and, and it, it, it really encourages us. Some we get testimony of people who lost their parents, others lost their spouses, but they are here. Those painful stories, when we talk to them, they say, we now have hope. My hope, I have so many <laughs> My hope for next year maybe. Eh? For me, I left my school. Diploma in education, half. Now my hope for next year is just to finish my education. Maybe, if God is there. I think if, I think if all I did was just drop people off and pick them up and never really heard the backstories, I might not understand how significant the work is that we're being involved in. And a few times I've gotten to go into the refugee settlements with them and see what's going on. That makes it all worth it to me. So it's um, it's really, it, to me, it's a very significant um, and very impactful part of what we're doing. All of our camps are located in very remote areas. I'm really thankful to MAF for this opportunity, especially to come and see our staff and, and work with our teams here. We would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the team, the MAF, for all the support. MAF has been our major partner. We wouldn't have done a lot if of not of MAF. So they have facilitated us to do our work. Thank you to MAF. <laughs>